In this lesson, I'll show you how to write a Fourier series to represent a wave. The question reads, write the Fourier series for the waveform shown below. The waveform shown below has a period of 2 pi, and that's outlined right here. And what you'll need to be successful here is knowing what the general formula for a Fourier series looks like, and that's shown right here. And keep in mind that odd functions have Fourier series with only sine terms and no constant. Even functions have Fourier series with only cosine terms, and it may or may not contain a constant term. So we have to determine if this function, through our observations, is odd or even. Now normally to do that, we look at the symmetry. If it's only symmetrical about the y-axis, then it's even. If it's symmetrical about both, then it's odd. We'll determine that in a moment. In step number one, initially, the waveform appears to be shifted two units up from the x-axis. Take a look. This is the x-axis, and it has been translated upwards. We must relocate the wave so that it centers at the origin. In fact, this transition will help us determine the waveform symmetry, which we discussed earlier. Once we find the equation for the relocated version, we should remember to add plus 2 to it. And the reason why is because it was initially 2 units up. So whatever the equation that we find at the very end for the Fourier series, we'll add plus 2 to it. This is what the altered waveform looks like if we do move the x-axis 2 units up. You'll notice that now, if you were to reflect this about both axes, it would look identical. So we can say that the function is odd. Think of it this way. If I were to reflect it about the x-axis, I would end up with something that looks like this. And then if I were to do the same for the y-axis, it would look like this. Therefore, it is odd. Also, the waveform appears to have half-wave symmetry. So if we were to look at the negative half cycle, let's say this part, and we pick this point here, half cycle away would be this point. The y-coordinate here is negative 1 and the y-coordinate here is 1. They have the same magnitude but opposite signs. So this exhibits half-wave symmetry and the Fourier series for half-wave symmetry only have odd harmonics. Keeping these two things in mind, the Fourier series can now be heavily modified. All of these terms, the ones that contain cosine, can go away because we know only sine will exist. In addition, the odd harmonics means that anything that's even gets eliminated too. Only what's odd is important to us. Since we're not focusing on a sub 1, a sub 2, and so on, and a sub 0, we don't have to worry about these two formulas. The only formula we have to worry about is this one. This general formula will help us determine the coefficients for our terms in the Fourier series. In step number 2, once we have our general equation y, we need to define our function f of x for b sub n. So take a look at b sub n, this formula. We don't know what f of x is. However, we can come up with it by creating a piecewise function. I've done that below. As you can tell from your wave, from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, it's a straight line. And we can find the slope of this straight line passing through the origin by using rise over run. So if I rise upwards two units and run from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, I'll end up with a slope that's 2 over pi. And with all linear equations, they are written like this, y is equal to mx plus b, where m represents the slope and b represents the y-intercept. Our y-intercept for that line is 0, so we don't have to worry about that. Therefore, our equation from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is 2 over pi x shown here. And then the next half cycle, this part, will obviously be negative 2 over pi x. And that's outlined right here. Since we have a piecewise function representing f of x, we need two b sub n's, one for each of the bounds. Notice that this is from negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and f of x is shown here, and the other b sub n has this function with the different bounds. Together, if we add these up, you should end up with b sub n is equal to the whole right side. This will help us find b sub 1, b sub 3, b sub 5, and so on. That being said, we now need to integrate each of these individually. I'll start with the first term. If you integrate this correctly, and recall that to integrate this function, you'll need to use integration by parts. I don't want to go through the whole process of integrating, so I have come up with the answer for you. 
The answer to this, the integral, is 2 times sine nx minus nx cosine nx all over pi squared n squared. And we need to evaluate this since this is a definite integral at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, these bounds. So we'll evaluate this at the upper bound, then subtract from the function evaluated at the lower bound. So let's start by substituting the upper bound into our equation. If I substitute pi over 2, interestingly, into cosine, when n is equal to 1, 3, 5, and any odd number, cosine goes to 0. So we don't have to worry about this term in the numerator. Let's only substitute pi over 2 into sine. We have 2 sine n pi over 2 over pi squared n squared. Now we evaluate it at the lower bound, and you should end up with minus 2 sine n bracket negative pi over 2 over pi to the power of 2 n to the power of 2. That's the integral for the first part. And for the second part, it should look like this, where all of this is being added to the second integral, which is shown on your screen now. You'll notice something interesting here. This term and this term are like terms, and these two terms are like terms. So we can combine them together, giving us our final b sub n general formula of 4 sine n times pi over 2 over pi squared n squared minus 4 sine negative n pi over 2 over pi squared n squared. We can use this general formula to find b sub 1, b sub 3, b sub 5, and b sub 7. If I were to substitute 1 into n here, and here, here, and here, I'll end up with 8 pi squared. And you can confirm that by using your calculator. Substituting 3 into wherever we see an n will give us negative 8 over 9 pi squared. Substituting 5, we get positive 8 over 25 pi squared. And finally, substituting 7, we get negative 8, 49 pi squared. Going back to our equation, we can now substitute what we just found into here, 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 and so on. And then don't forget that plus 2, because we had translated it downwards by 2 units at the very beginning. Our equation becomes y is equal to 8 pi over 2 sine 1x plus negative 8 over 9 pi sine 3x plus 8 over 25 pi squared sine 5x plus our final term, which I'll just denote as these ellipses, and then plus 2 for that initial translation. This right here represents the Fourier series equation for the waveform we started with. And that is how to write a Fourier series to represent a wave.